Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the cool guns in their upcoming December 2014 premiere auction. And you know, one thing you normally aren't used to seeing on a lever action Old West cowboy style rifle is that Colt Prancing Pony. But the rifle I'm looking at today has just that on the side. This is a Model 1883 Colt Burgess lever action rifle. These were only made for a couple years, 1883 until 1885, and only a little over 6,000 of them were manufactured. And there's a real interesting story that goes behind why they stopped being manufactured. A uh, little bit of background though on the inventor. Uh, Andrew Burgess was an extremely prolific inventor. Um, he had nearly 900 patents to his name in the United States, including quite a few in firearms. He is most definitely an underappreciated designer in the United States. Uh, he developed some repeating sh early repeating shotguns. Uh, he developed rifles, not just for Colt here in 1883, but prior he worked with uh, Whitney and several other gun companies manufacturing other designs of lever action rifle. So before I start into the story, the politics and the intrigue of this rifle, I think we should talk for a minute about the gun itself. Uh, mechanically, this was a, uh, a superior gun to the Winchester 1873, which was the predominant uh, pistol caliber lever action rifle of the time. The Burgess it has a shorter receiver, which allows it to be overall lighter in weight for the same barrel length compared to the Winchester. It has a shorter toggle lock inside, which makes the gun stronger. Um, the action would be capable of, of holding up to higher pressure. Um, in this case, these were all chambered for the 4440 cartridge, just like was used in the, uh, the Colt single action army revolvers. But uh, you did have the potential there for higher strength. Um, in addition, the loading gate on these rifles is a little bit different. Instead of on the Winchester, where the, the loading gate pushes in, on, in this gun, the loading gate actually slides forward. Um, haven't actually tried using one of these. I suspect that would actually be a little bit easier to use. There's not a whole lot else to say mechanically about the, uh, the Colt Burgess here. Uh, they were made as both rifles and carbines. This particular model is a carbine, of course. And, you know, in terms of practical use, basically identical to the Winchester guns. Uh, the manual of arms is the same. They work the same. Uh, to the very great majority of people, they look exactly the same. A lot of people wouldn't necessarily be able to spot one of these in a pile of Winchesters. So, I think that means it's about time for us to talk about the political intrigue of the gun. So what happened, of course, if you think about it, you'll recognize that Colt is the big name in late 1800s revolvers, and Winchester is the big name in late 1800s rifles. And to see them kind of crossing boundaries is a bit unusual. Well, what had happened actually was that the Winchester company had gotten interested in revolver design back in the 1870s. In 1871, there was a big contract up uh, for supplying the Russian military with handguns. And Winchester actually designed a, a revolver for the Russians. Uh, the Russians didn't end up accepting it, but the Turkish military did order tens of thousands of them, believe it or not. Another revolver you've probably never heard of. Well, Winchester kept, kept tossing around the, the possibility of getting into the revolver market primarily for export. And this really worried the Colt company. So in addition, around 1880, Winchester started importing shotguns for sale as well. And this put a big dent in Colt, the Colt company's income from shotgun production because the, the imported Winchester guns were undercutting them. So these factors together really were kind of worrying the Colt company. So they went out and they hired Andrew Burgess to design them a lever action rifle that would be superior to the Winchester 1873. This gun was the result. It went into production. Of course, this retaliation from the Colt company worried the Winchester company. So Winchester showed up at Colt's door, some Winchester executives, most likely. A lot of the story is a little hazy, but the basic facts are, are reasonably understood. Um, a couple of Colt executives showed up, and what exactly they had with them isn't known, but uh, they had actually just started to import British Bulldog revolvers made by the Webley Company from England in an, in an attempt to undercut Colt revolver sales. And they probably, to this meeting, also brought along some prototype revolvers that they'd been working on in the background. Um, these weren't necessarily guns that were ready for production, 
But what Winchester wanted to do was come to an agreement with the Colt company that Colt would stick to making rifles and Winchester could stick to making pistols and they wouldn't interfere in each other's business. Now, today, we might take a, a dim view of two companies coming to a gentleman's agreement like that. Uh, but back in the 1880s, that's what they did and, and, and that ended up working. Uh, the Colt Burgess rifle went out of production after only about 6,000 had been made. Uh, Colt never again did produce a lever action rifle. They did make some slide actions, the, the Lightning series, and of course they had some 22 caliber slide action rifles. But uh, Colt stayed out of the lever action business and Winchester stayed out of the revolver business and it went pretty well for both of them. What it does leave us with today is some pretty unusual rifles from Colt's little stint in the, the rifle business. If this is something that you'd be interested in adding to your own collection, this is of course for sale. I've provided a link down below to Rock Island's catalog page for this gun. You can take a look at their high-res pictures there and well, you can set up an account and uh, place a bid on it online if you're interested. For the, the folks who are interested in getting one of these and maybe can't afford the price tag for an original, they are of course quite rare, uh, it is interesting and of note that uh, one of the Italian gun makers has actually started making reproduction copies of the Colt Burgess. So they are available to people who want to take them out and shoot them and abuse them and use them like they were used in the 1880s. So that's also cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.